Whether you're new to Ascension World of Warcraft or already a seasoned adventurer, this guide is your key to mastering the basics, conquering the classless system and forging your own legendary tale in Season 9. Be sure to watch the whole video as you will learn a lot of valuable tips throughout the guide. Project Ascension is a custom World of Warcraft server that introduces unique features and modifications to the game. It's known for its classless system, where players can create characters without being bound to traditional class restrictions. Instead, they can choose abilities from different classes as they level up. The brand new Season 9 that was introduced in December last year adds some randomness to the classless system as you roll your abilities and talents from the pool of around 1500 skills, which gives you an infinite ways of building your character and every person you stumble upon will have different setup. When you first create your new character and log into the game, you will see a new part of the interface that allows you to roll abilities with the dice. When you click it, it's going to randomly give you four abilities to start off with. Or click Roll Abilities to perform another roll. Accept what you have and go with the random build. There's a custom icon on the screen which is named Character Advancement. It also goes with the key bound to N. It opens a completely new interface. Uh, from Ascension. Down on the bottom, you've got a couple of tabs which basically goes for the character advancement, skill cards, vanity, which are basically all the customizable and cosmetic stuff like mounts, item looks and stuff like that. Mystic Enchants, which is basically another new system to uh, the Ascension, which basically upgrades your current abilities. Seasonal Achievements and the Wardrobe, which is basically your transmogrification. Uh, system which works basically the same as retail so you uh, equip an item and you save its appearance for the starting skills we are interested in the skill cards uh, as you can see this will give you a completely new interface uh, but what we are interested in as you can see you've got ability cards you've got talent cards because we have to mention right here that all skills in the game are differentiated between uh, ability and talents. Uh, basically abilities are active skills that you can use and talents, the whole pool of talents from all the classes with addition of all the legendary and epic engines that were added throughout the whole uh, nine seasons of Ascension. So there's quite a lot of skills to choose from. In the beginning you will not have too many cards to actually start off with. The cards are separated into standard cards and golden skill cards. Uh, which basically are less common uh, and harder to get than the standard ones and the whole principle is that uh, it actually does not allow you to put all the skills you want uh, in the four slots so basically you got two slots in here four slots in here but we're gonna get into that later uh, down in the video where we're gonna be uh, talking about specific building tactics so when you decide to keep the abilities, you will uh, have a choice to choose your main stat. Uh, as you can see, mostly when you have some skills, you can hold shift to get more information. As, I, as you can see, an ascension has added more stuff to it. For example, if you take strength, when you wield one-handed weapon, your armor penetration is increased. Or when you wield a two-handed weapon, your melee and range abilities deal 10% more damage for agility, uh, reduce your global cooldown and the cost, or uh, increase critical damage. For intellect, you increase your spell power or spell haste, depending on the weapon. Same goes for spirit. You can choose whatever you want, whether you're a healer, tank or whatever. Uh, for paladin, of course, we go for strength. Uh, and we've got everything settled. Uh, here you can also check in your character advancement. Uh, here you have all the skills you have chosen, basically. All the breakdown. Uh, here you can have a look at what abilities are basically av available from the classes. There is a very nice tab in here which gives you a summary. Uh, basically this shows you a nice book appearance, all your ability essences, all your abilities and talents basically. So later down the line when you collect scrolls of fortune and scrolls of fortune talents, you can right click on your ability and click on learn to actually reset this. Uh, for abilities you need this scroll. Uh, this actually works for both talents and abilities because talents are, let's say, more rare, harder to get because there's a more... the pool is just simply bigger for them. Uh, so usually you get more talent points, but standard scores of fortune can be used for both talents and abilities, uh, not the other way around. So if you've chosen your abilities and your primer stat, you are basically set and ready to go. Uh, you can also open your bags and you have 
all kinds of weapons required for starter. So you've got ranged, uh, gun or bow, you've got a staff if you need to, you've got two-handed weapon, you've got a dagger or one-hander and shield, depending what you want. You can wear all kinds of armor, plate, cloth, leather, doesn't matter. You've got all the stats in here. The stats have been squished a little bit. For example, hit rating uh, counts for everything, it uh, doesn't matter. If you have a hit rating on your gear, it's going to be counting for overall score. Uh, things like expertise uh, have been deleted from the game to not make things uh, more difficult and not invest in some useless uh, statistics. Also, when you uh, go for the strength stat, uh, your spells will also benefit from your strength. Of course, not to the same degree as from the intellect, uh, but it's going to increase. And for example, is if you can see, the primary stat focus on burrowing spell damage increasing mana pool and is especially beneficial for cloth armor users. If you choose intellect and you're gonna go for your character sheet, you're gonna get your bonus spell damage based on your intellect. And also intellect at this point increases your standard melee damage or ranged. Don't take things for granted uh, because you played WoW for 20 years already because on ascension many things can differ, even such a simple ability like uh, Crusader Strike, for example, it's changed completely more to like a retail version. So many abilities work like that. Really take your time in reading through the spells and talents you get because many things can really shock you how they work and how they have been changed. Those changes were actually made. Uh, so strength builds, for example, can also use spells because, you know, they were kind of under power without the spell power edition and stuff like that without extra scaling. So they change that, stick to the theme of your class and you should be fine. So when your character is set up and ready, you can start off your first quest, but actually there's one more thing you have to uh, check. Here stands the Stony Talk Trials and Challenges. Here you can have a look and you have a complete list of the challenges and trials awaiting you in this world. Uh, you also have difficulties listed in here. You've got Hardcore, you've got Adventure Mode, You've got things like uh, Iron Man, you've got Professions Trials, you've got Nightmare. There are many, many things. Uh, Resolute Mode, which basically turns uh, your whole experience into standard one, uh, one time experience uh, adventure. There are also uh, rewards for all the challenges. You get some kind of uh, mounts, for example. Uh, you get some uh, caches, some nice currency. You can check out the leaderboards and it, uh, you can check the restrictions. Detail informative. Adventure mode is very interesting. Uh, it basically turns the whole world into uh, uh, whole mobs into elites. So it's a lot more harder. And actually, you can adjust the level. On level 100, they actually are so hard. Like basically, <laughs> every mob is a raid boss. A raid boss. So they're very, very interesting. But you can also do it in the party. So it just spices up the gameplay and are very fun to do uh, for some additional rewards. Just remember before starting out to always choose your trial first because when you start gaining XP, most of them will be actually banned already because you gain experience. So if you plan on doing one of those. Uh, check them out first and then start doing quests and all other things. In the starter zones, you also have like beginner book of artisans, uh, which you can basically uh, learn professions to start off very early. And you have beginner book of ascension, where you can actually, which is your like comprehensive trainer in the beginning. It, it only has like skills up to level 20 so later down the line you have to look for trainers specific trainers but there are things in the game that actually allow you to skip over that and make things faster and easier through the vanity items as i showed before uh, for example i've got this little destined book of ascension which basically trains all your abilities anytime anywhere season 9 bundle exclusive uh, those things uh, can also be bought by gold in game from the auction house, so don't worry, you can get them very, very easily. Also, please take a look, guys, at the interface options because Ascension actually added more custom stuff to it. For example, like top targeting can be customized, so you can uh, check prioritize facing enemies, prioritize enemies in combat, prioritize non summons, and this is perfect because while top targeting, in the midst of a battle, especially in PvP, 
you will not target some kind of pet main target of focus so you know only visible targets so they are not in line of sight you can also uh, switch the target maximum range and even the angle in which it can target so it can be very specific but even more in combat section you have area of effect indicators uh, i have enemy spells checked so basically when there is some bad stuff on the ground you will see it with the big area of effect red big circle on the ground they added also action camera if you like things like that so it's definitely worth checking as well if you guys are interested in add-ons that i use you can check out my other video on the channel there's a whole specific thing dedicated to add-ons so be sure to check it out so guys when you finally reach level 10 and reach your main capital city you will start getting your skills and abilities every level so standard skills that you can use are you are going to be getting them every second level so level 10 12 14 16 and so forth and you're going to get a new talent on uh, every level up to level 60. so uh, you play around with your starting abilities from level 1 to 10 and then you start getting new stuff the interface with the dice will show up and you just simply roll a new ability in this case, I got level 31 and I got Soft Paw Strike using Bloodthirst, Execute and Rend. Now trigger an instant attack with your offhand dealing 220% weapon damage. And the grant you Soft Paw, increase the damage done by your offhand weapon by 40%. As you can see, unfortunately, I don't have Bloodthirst, Execute nor Rend. Uh, so it doesn't suit my build, but who knows, maybe up until level 60 I will get one of those abilities. And then this legendary uh, skill will actually be very useful when we're at it when you go into a character advancement you click summary uh, you can actually see that uh, this border around your skill indicates whether the build the skill is common uncommon rare or epic or legendary uh, so basically uh, it's the same as with the items so orange is legendary purple is epic blue is rare yellow is uncommon and uh without any border like white is simple common spell uh, most of the talents that are very very important very powerful uh, or are basically like five out of five as in this case aggression uh, as you know this is simple uh, rogue talent but i have it ruled on the maximum points so this is counted as legendary uh, this also goes for this effect so or strike it is quite powerful so it is counted as legendary uh, in this season, this actually doesn't matter that much because, yeah, if you're lucky enough and you have enough patience, you can actually roll only on legendary skills and talents, although this is very unlikely. Uh, so this only is an indicator of, like, power of the talent. As you can see, I just finished a battleground, and first things first, I get battleground spoils. You get those kind of uh, patience from basically everything you do, whether you do mana storms, whether you do... Uh, dungeon finder uh you know simple instances when you do open world quest you also get caches from the quest that can, can consists of uh gear upgrades or the case of fortunes then you just open those caches and you get those scrolls scroll of fortune this is for the skills scroll of fortune talents uh, and now as you can see we got those two and i can just click my summary i don't need swipe from the cat so i click unlearn and then i get a new roll I got Hydra's Venom, strike the target inflicting a poisoned bleed that deals 14 of damage and by an additional 148 based on weapon damage. This, and as you can see, if you click shift, you can see that this uses rend modifiers and counts as both bleed and poison effect. And we just got this legendary softball strike, which basically says that using a rend now triggers an instant attack with your offhand and gives you softball. So this is very interesting. Uh, Hydra's Venom is, let's say, like a rend synonymous skill. So it should work like one. This uses ra Rage and doesn't have any other modifiers. So we're going to test it out. Now then, we've got a Swine in here. Let's get some Rage. Apply. And as you can see, Swarthbow works perfectly. So as you can see, if there's a rend modifier as stated in the skill, this basically means that everything that uh rend procs it will be working with this ability as well so basically you've got like those checkpoints every 10 levels 
uh, and you have a special NPC in the main city. As you can see, there's so many people playing this server. <laughs> uh, Birth or the Silas, you can speak with them and as you can see, every 10 levels you get scrolls of fortune. I have already collected my, uh, my reward from level 10 and level 20. And then level 30, I get 3 skill ones and 5 talents. On level 40, I get 4 skills and 6 talents. On level 50, I have skill 7 talents and so on and so forth. Uh, so I'm going to collect mind scrolls. And this is how ascension changes your way of thinking. Because usually you want offhand weapon very fast. You know, so it generates more rage, more DPS, stuff like that, more attacks. But in this case, because of this talent that I have that uh, uses my offhand weapon, um, you know, it is an attack with your offhand dealing 220% uh, offhand weapon. So now I don't really need fast weapon, I need the slow weapon so it can actually scale all this weapon damage. So I switch my dagger into a very slow mace and then it's going to benefit me more. Okay, the next thing we have are the skill cards. So basically for all activities in the world, we can also get the skill cards. And later down the line on level 60, uh, we can get more of those to actually start rolling the cards and trying to create our own perfect builds. But basically what you do, you just right click it. And this will show you five cards which you can click on. And then you can see what kind of skills you have unlocked. As you can see down on the bottom, you've got two decks, you've got standard skill cards and golden skill cards. Uh, the golden skill cards actually do not drop or anything like, like that. You are uh, you have two sources which you can get them. As you can see on the top of the window, you see this progress bar. Basically, every time you roll a similar card that you already have, uh, this is going to add to the progress bar depending on the rarity of the card you get. So yeah, legendary skills. If you get a duplicate, it's going to give you like 15% or something like that. So uh, it actually goes pretty fast especially when you start getting uh, a lot of the cards already uh, then i just filled it 100 percent with this deck thankfully the interface is very intuitive and you don't have to actually go into your bag to click everything all the cards that are available are going to be shown in here golden skill cards on the right side standard skill cards on the left side so we just open another deck and every time we open those, we also get the Dark Moon tickets. There are Golden Dark Moon tickets and Standard ones. And those tickets can be spent right here to buy three cards of chosen quality. So if you're looking for some special legendary uh, talent, you can go and buy this deck in hopes that one of those legendary cards will be the one you're looking for. So there's quite a lot of randomness in all that character building, but... You know, it takes time, and uh, that's nice because this server then gives you longevity when you're looking and fishing for your perfect build. And there are so many possibilities uh, that basically this system gives you that there's really no time for boredom. And that's basically it. You open every deck uh, that you have to get even more cards thanks to this. And even later down the line, when you already have so many cards from the standard deck you still want to open them only to uh, progress this bar and get as many golden decks as possible you can also on level 60 go to the silas and here on the left side pick up the golden skill cards and you can buy one skill and one talent point deck for 50 gold so it's pretty easy to get so like 50 is not that big to be honest there are also dark mode prizes in here uh, so you can buy like specific because the, the the one I showed you before was only for the talents on the other interface and here you can go for the skill cards you can buy like if you're looking for some shaman spell you go here and also for those tickets you can buy a specific skill card that you're looking for. Usually in the center of the city uh, somebody has spawned enchanting altar. This is another thing uh, the way you can customize your character. You've got so many slots in here. I could call it like a glyph system that was in retail uh, some time ago. And basically you can just type whatever interests you the most. So for example, I would like to improve my sinister strike ability. So I write sinister strike. And here I have some enchants 
that can give me some buffs. Then I can just click it, apply. Uh, this uh, gives you like numbers of stacks. This I can put three uh, maximum, so they stack the power of them. And Mystic Orbs and Mystic Extracts are required to actually apply those. So I click it, it saves, and now my uh, Sinister Strike will have a chance to actually heal me and increase my primary stat by 9. Uh, so basically this will this is counted as triple, so this effect will be tripled basically, because I have stacked it 3 times. And you can basically get those enchants from simple drops, uh, they are getting... They're being looted from mobs, from all the activities you do in the game, so they just naturally come to you. You can also, uh, if you're looking for a specific one, you can clear the filters and just type ability that you're looking for. For example, once again, the Nist Reich. As you can see, there are so many more I can actually get, uh, which I don't have. So some of them can be bought off auction house and they're not that expensive. So if you get in the open world some kind of very, very nice looking enchant, but you don't really need it or you already have it in your uh, library, then you can always put it on the auction house for some nice amount of gold to get the profit. You can also go to the other tab, Ancient Scrolls, uh, buy one scroll for 10 silver and you got those mystic runes where basically uh, allow you to reforge into a random enchant. So as you can see, I got this subtle thunderstorm, which reduces the threat dealt. I can activate it, but I will lose the scroll, or I can use this special mystic extract to basically save it to the collection, and then I can use mystic orbs to actually apply as many as I want. So uh, this is the best choice usually. So you got three currents in here, mystic runes, to reforge those into new effects. Mystic Extracts to actually save it to the collection. Uh, yeah, one is actually required to do so. And Mystic Orbs to actually apply those ancients onto your uh, slots. So uh, that's basically how the uh, skill enchanting works. Another thing that is very important in your leveling journey are the call boards, which are available in every capital city. Uh, so in here, basically, you've got another custom interface that give you quests. Uh, Path of Ascension are basically like a tutorial quests for you, which will uh, give you some of the currency. Marks of Ascension are the most important thing. You can buy heirlooms for that, you can buy some cosmetics, yeah, and you use Marks of Ascension on level 60 to actually uh, get more scrolls of fortune and uh, skill cards. So it's very, very uh, valuable. Uh, for example, I got reached to level 60, I'm going to get some stuff, uh, open the dungeon finder, for example, I've got this special quest, uh, just to sign for some dungeon, yeah, I'm going to go for a DPS, find a group, the quest is completed, as you can see, so it's a free currency for me, but for example, uh, you can go for the PvP section, hold to arms, I just won battleground, so I can turn this in, I'm going to get 1200 honor, uh, 12,000 honor, uh, many max of ascension, mystic orbs that we have spoken about just a second ago. So just complete the quest. Done. Uh, the very important thing here is this repeatable mark in here. Because every time you don't play every day, uh, one of the stacks here is going to be applied. And then, for example, you don't lose your progress because you're not playing. Because then you can just get, come back later and finish the dailies that you didn't do before. This is a very, very convenient way of doing things because you don't lose currency and you don't feel like behind because you missed like some of the days of playing. So this is very important and good system, I think. When we're at it, you can actually go into your honor interface with your H key. And here you have the PVP rule set. Uh, you've got three rule sets, which you can use, no risk PVE. Uh, which is basically standard where nobody can attack you and you are basically safe in the open world. Oh, I, I even had a quest to actually uh, choose the risk, so that's even better. Uh, PvP, no risk PvP is where you can actually fight, but you don't lose any item in the open world and you have to obtain gear uh, from dungeon raids and battlegrounds and stuff like that. But you also have the risk of reward, high risk PvP. So basically, simple monsters can actually... Uh, give you raid quality gear but also when you die you lose that gear so that's why it's so important to actually be careful in this mode 
in every capital city you can find this falcon mutation portal uh which basically then you can uh, commutate each item just to be safe when you die in the high risk but then you will lose gold because of it so if you commutate the full set usually you lose around like two or three hundred gold on max level so that's quite a lot to be honest of course you can just uncommutate everything and don't care about the gear but yeah it's just a way to be kind of secure there are also the mana storms which basically uh, you can play solo, as you can see. And those are very fun short instances that can also award you some caches, uh, case of fortunes, all the skill cards. I'm going to show you real quick one of those. You pick up the level. Of course, you're going to start from level 1. With other characters, I already got to like level 231, uh, which is getting harder. That work in here is spawn in the random place in the instance. Uh, also random instance this scale so it doesn't matter uh, what level you are you get some potions in here endless mana stone potion which is your heal uh, because you're playing solo uh, so you don't have a healer so uh, you can stay alive thanks to this uh, millhouse generation matrix which is, which is a resurrection but we're playing solo so we don't use this and millhouse magical escape which is basically a trinket so you can get out from the cc on 30 second cooldown so it's pretty useful uh, but yeah, basically what you do, you get to defeat Celebras the Cursed. Uh, so you just need to defeat one boss in each instance to get the thing completed. You basically go through the trash mobs. They drop some loot, but I would actually not recommend it. You're just gonna uh, get your bags full in no time. In solo mode, they are kind of easy. They can also, from defeating the mobs, you can get those hearts that actually replenish your health and mana. And then you actually just go for the skull, so the main target. And when you defeat it, the portal opens and you go into another level. And as you can see, I received the mana storm cache. I can go into the portal, and then we're in a level 2 and I'm supposed to kill another boss. I opened the cache, I got some items, so we didn't get any reset points, but... It's pretty easy and it can, it can get you going very, very fast. Uh, basically... Each level you go further, the XP you get is going to increase. So as you can see, it's actually 1% per level. So yeah, on level 231, it's quite a, a big XP boost, but it's also very hard to finish. So guys, at this point, you basically know everything you need uh, to get to level 60 at this point. All right, boys, so you finally got to level 60 and you're ready to rock and roll. So the first thing to actually look out for is your character progression. Now, when you get into the Silas... He doesn't have the level rewards, he actually gives you scores of fortune and the skill cards for the marks of ascension. Uh, this basically begins uh, at the lower cost but eventually caps at 3000 marks of ascension for each scrolls of fortune and card packs. But actually the marks of ascension are easy to come by, you basically get it from every activity you do in game. And you can basically get quite a lot of those uh, from the cardboard quests which are you daily dose of activity, which, as I said before, can reward you for basically everything you do in-game. So as you can see, you've got those Path of Ascension, which are basically like those tutorial quests, let's say. Uh, so you've got many, many things to still complete. Uh, but you got weekly rewards, uh, you got PvE. Then, uh, this is like the best source of the Marks of Ascension. As you can see for some of those quests, you get like up to 4,000 Marks of Ascension. Uh, which basically means that it allows you to buy some scrolls of fortune straight away. Uh, you also, as you can see, I haven't been playing this character for some time now, and I have uh, stacked the repeatable of this quest at 7 now, so basically I can get so many marks of ascension for this before my uh, before because I fall back for not playing, so this basically is good. It also gives quite a lot of caches, uh, and it can give you like item levels, uh, gear uh, with item level up to level 70. So that's quite a lot. It can set you up for raids uh, and high mythic plus without no problem. Also give you a lot of uh, mystic things for enchanting, which is very useful. On top of that, you got uh, specific quests for dungeons in here, for doing the uh, mythic dungeon, for example, Diamal North, quest to kill a uh, world boss as well. Uh, for PvP, if you prefer that, you've got the dual quest, you've got cold standard call to arms, arena quests, killing uh, the king of the opposite faction, 
uh, all kind of quest professions, as I said before, creating uh, specific things will give you marks and caches as well. High risk uh, is actually not really worth it, especially in the beginning. I wouldn't recommend it because yeah, you don't have your perfect build. You don't know exactly how the ascension works, so I wouldn't actually step into the PvP scene straight up. So it's probably a waste of time because you will lo lose quite a lot of gear by being farmed by so high by some high item level PvP guys. So in the beginning, your daily activities probably should be straight up doing the dailies as much as possible, getting as many marks of ascension and skill cards. Uh, before you start prestiging. So now we have two scenarios. Uh, so basically you are happy with the build. You've bought quite a lot of Marks of Ascension. You've bought Scrolls of Fortune. You reset all those skills. And you've got your perfect build. Now you can just continue playing this. And go for the standard World of Warcraft route. So join some guild. Do some Mythic Plus progression. Do some raiding progression. Uh, all that kind of stuff is available to you. There are many many difficulties. Uh, with Ascendant being like the highest one over Mythic and actually Ascendant does require uh, quite a lot of synergy already because there are new, completely new mechanics in there uh, so probably it's not puggable but I haven't put there yet uh, as well so that's what I heard only and we have the second scenario when you actually where actually your build is complete garbage and you don't want it but while farming those scores of fortune you also got quite a lot of skill cards and some of those skill cards seem interesting to you so now is the perfect time to actually go for a prestige next to the call board you can find this little npc named chromie which you probably know already and this will allow you to actually reset your character to level one uh, you, for the prestige, you will get the token of prestige, which then you can, uh, re, uh, for which you can actually buy some cosmetic gear, or some very nice mounts, or also leveling items if you do like those. So if you decide to reset your character and just come to Chromie, or reset specialization one and activate prestige mode, then you will be uh, teleported back to the, your starter zone. All your gear will be put back into the bags and you will have all the skills and abilities reset and you will be ready for a fresh start before we go into uh creating custom builds i also wanted to mention that uh, for the mana storms that you play uh, they are actually one of if you like to play solo they are actually one of the best sources of the uh, cases of fortune and skill card packs so they are definitely worth doing and also you will get those Bedlam Bullions and Bones of Bolts. And there are two NPCs in here. One is Coxworth. Uh, for the Bones of Bolts, you can actually buy some items that can improve your experience in the Mana Storms. So you got some Statistic uh, Enhancers. You've got Interruption Rod. For example, if you don't have any Interruption uh, Spell, you've got some CC things. You've got damage things like bombs and stuff like that. So... You should definitely look into that if you uh, if mana storms are fun to you. And the other guy is the Millhouse mana storm himself. This guy is actually selling only cosmetic things, but he has a very nice mount, which I'm actually uh, which I actually wanted to buy, but I still miss 1700 bullions. But he also have like this, you know, quality of life spells like Safe Ball, Mind Soothe, Teleport Moonglade, Levitate. Uh, conjure refreshments, uh, call of the elements if you want to use totems, and also term of picklock. So uh, you can farm some currency to actually buy those books and learn those skills without losing any skill, uh, talent, or ability uh, points for not so mandatory skills. Now on level sixty, maybe even before, but on level sixty you can actually uh, visit the auction house and. Here we've got three NPCs, which is a transmogrifier, one of those. And the best thing about the transmogrifier, it basically looks like retail one, but the best thing is that you actually transmogrify item slot, not the item itself. So uh, you always keep the look of your armor, even if you change gear. And this is one of the best things I've ever seen uh, for transmogrification. You have this other NPCs in here. You can also buy some amazing items from here. From the bazaar token which are basically a real 
uh, real world money. So if you do have some money to spare, you can always try that. On auction house, you can look for many, many things like, for example, uh, the Death and Book of Ascension, like I said before. You can buy it off auction house for gold. As you can see, the book costs 350. Uh, you can also buy like Aura of Experience if you want, which will increase your experience gained for the prestiging. Uh, the best thing about Aura is that if you're playing some group content, only one person in the party needs to have this. So if you don't have any experience boosters playing uh, dungeons or pvp is very very recommended because uh, many times people just have this aura and will increase your experience gained by quite a lot you can also buy simple cosmetic items for gear as well as you can see this is only cosmetic uh, thing it deals no damage but you buy this once and you can use the looks of it so there are many many amazing armors on the ocean house you can get one more thing I wanted to mention about the daily quest is that those standard PvE ones when you have to kill some mobs or maybe even a boss, they actually uh, are being done in high end game level zones. So like things like Silithus, Winter Spring, um, Ashara, Western or Eastern Plaguelands. And basically we got a fast travel in here. There's like this first class experimental teleporter and step on it and then you can choose your destination and by eight gold with eight gold it will actually teleport you straight up to the zone so uh, the travel time will not take forever a very convenient way of traveling so i would definitely recommend using it while doing those quests and do keep in mind that uh, also there is cosmetic items named cold uh, where you which you can basically use anywhere in the world, in the open world, and when people are doing those quests, many times they have those call boards, and you don't even have to come back to the city to basically turn in all your quests. Alright boys, so that should be it, that should contain all the information you need to actually get your first character to level 60, and then start working on it. Uh, now, uh, then we're gonna go quickly to take a look how to actually assemble your build when you already have some skill cards. Right boys, so when it comes down to the build creating, I have to really thank Ascension team for creating such an amazing uh, filter interface. Uh, basically, you can sort it by quality if you want. You can all, all, also get only the starter skill cards and you can only choose the collected ones. But the most important thing is what uh, I was talking about is that when you plan a build, you have some idea in mind. So for example, I want to create an assassin. So for assassins, I would be interested in using ambush. So then I go for the ability cards. I usually go for talent card first, actually. And they are simply put ambush in here. And it will actually show me all the delete the filters. It will actually show me all the available talents and skill cards in the game that have some kind of synergy with ambush skill. This actually showed up because it has ambush in the name, but for example, uh, double agent, as you can see, increases your stealth detection, your ambush strikes stealth target twice. Fleeting shadow, cheap shot or ambush from stealth allows you to use ambush outside of stealth for two and a half seconds. So the forbidden dance also consists of uh, ambush. So when I try to create a build, I do get some idea, okay, I would like to have an assassin. And then I usually just try to skim through the abilities I would be interested in using. And then I can see what kind of synergies uh, they can create. So for example, sometimes this can work with that, or I don't know, let's go for example for the rend, what we can have in here. We've got this elemental rend, for example. And as you can see, uh, it requires fireball, fire damage, yes. Yeah, so we kind of know what we need to, let's say, synergize with this. Or, oh, this one is great. Blades of Blood. Using Charge or Colossus Smash grants you Blades of Blood. Your Whirlwind now hits five additional targets and applies Rend. So we know that for this build, for this ability to work, we need both Rend and Whirlwind, but also Charge. So uh, if you want to apply Rend in AoE, we need in the whirlwind and then for example in ability cards i can also put rend and i can see that there are many other uh iterations of rend in the game added 
Of course, there will be some misfits like Air Ascendance, for example, because it has some of the letters. But for example, Kana Rend wounds the target causing it to bleed for 40 damage plus initial. Uh, this is simply a Rend spell, but for bear form. Hell Scream is an AoE Rend. Hydra's Venom. This uses Rend modifiers as well, so we've seen that before. So there are many, many options to actually play around with. So what you want, like I said before, when I was looking, for example, when I was creating my Lightning Warrior build, I just Lightning and looked for any synergies I found. And this is the first one, Assault and Battery. Dealing damage with Thunderclap and Execute grants you uh, Assault and Battery reduces the cost of the next Lightning Bolt. And I already knew that we can kind of connect those uh, with each other. And you go further, for example, you find something like Lightning Bolt, the Chain Lightning Restore, a Charge of Lightning Blade. Uh, then I know I will be using Lightning Bolts, so then I can go... Uh, I can look for the lightning blade and I see in the skills that when I type lightning I've got the lightning blade legendary it has three charges and my lightning bolt will actually regenerate it so you know there are synergies all over the place you just need to know what you're looking for so when you're wondering about creating a build do have some idea on how you want to play and then just simply uh, look for the abilities that could play that role and yeah as as i said before i would start off from talents just to look for the perfect synergies between uh, the abilities and then during looking for those synergies some uh, really unexpected things uh, you can find that can work out pretty well with each other then you go into the skill cards do mind though that some of the builds can require quite a lot of uh, skill cards and talent cards and you basically are very limited with the space for those so there will always be like this rng factor in it so just don't expect that Being a card will just basically allow you to create a perfect build because there will always be this energy rng uh, factor in it so guys i hope this guide helped you out uh, if I did miss something, please let me know in the comment section below, then maybe I can just type you in the comments, then I can just give you the answer in the comments. If not, maybe I can just create another video uh, if the topic is sufficient. So thank you for watching for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more Ascension content, the build and everything from this amazing classless server. I wish you all the best and may RNG be with you.